Now, this year is the 80th anniversary of the first test flight of the Spitfire, and a racing seaplane that influenced the Spitfire's design after winning the Schneider Trophy is on display in Southampton. Our reporter Shan Robbins has more. Southampton's Solent Sky Museum plays homage to the birthplace of the Spitfire and have on display both the Spitfire and its forerunner, the Supermarine S6, that won the 1929 Schneider Trophy. Makers of the Spitfire, Supermarine, were predominantly a seaplane manufacturer, and their chief designer, RJ Mitchell, designed racing seaplanes to compete in the Schneider Trophy. That was a competition, um, for a speed competition, for the, the safest and fastest flying boat or seaplane in the world. A number of countries were involved over um, something like 10 years, and the speed that was um, uh, improved on from the very first flight, which was 30 odd miles an hour, to 400 by 1931, uh, was won by one of Mitchell's aircraft, the S6. And the S6 is here in the museum, and that had the world speed record. It was the fastest aircraft in the world in 1929, and this is an original aeroplane. And as I explained to school kids as they, as they come in, it's the equivalent if you try to explain to them about the modern Royal Air Force, the RAS fighter plane, the Typhoon. It's Mach 2, which means twice the speed of sound. In 1929, this aircraft is the equivalent of Mach 4 because the brand new RAF fighter in 1929 was a Bristol Bulldog and that could fly 178 miles an hour. This little lady, 350 miles an hour. The original concept of the Schneider Trophy was to make marine aircraft, so it's seaplanes, which include float planes and flying boats, safer. That was Jacques Schneider's original idea. He was the heir to an armaments manufacturing company in France. And one of the ideas was whoever won the contest that nation would host the following year's contest. From the early 1920s, it was then every two years because it took time to develop new aircraft. So we, as a nation, won the contest in 1927. Therefore, in 1929, we were hosting it. And part of the premise was, if you won it as a nation three times in a five-year period, then you kept this wonderful trophy in perpetuity. Supermarine won the trophy for the UK in 1927, again in 1929 with the home win racing off Southampton at Callshot, and also in 1931. And a replica of the trophy is housed in Solent Sky Museum with the original in London. It became a national pride element, really, particularly for people like Italy. Uh, Mussolini poured millions upon millions of pounds equivalent into developing motor cars, motorcycles and aircraft to get the glory for the new Italian Empire as he wanted. And Britain, America, France, other countries had been involved, Switzerland once. They then unfortunately had to do similar. So different companies in different countries designed aircraft for what people think is a race but it's not, it's a contest to make aircraft safer. The final part of each year's contest, or each two years' contest, was, a, yes, a race. And that's what people remember about the Schneider Trophy. Mitchell was able to gain a tremendous amount of information on high-speed flight, which caused, stood him in very good stead when he went on to design Spitfire. And if you look at the, the two aircraft, quite different, but there are very many characteristics in both. The winning seaplane of the 1931 Schneider Trophy is displayed in the Science Museum in London and Solent Sky's museum manager is passionate that the 1929 winner's rich history remain here. It belongs in Southampton. It was designed, built and flown in Southampton originally. And it did move around afterwards. It was dismantled and it moved around within Supermarine. They actually had it hanging from the rafters at one point. Then it went to various displays. Straight after the race it went to Crystal Palace on display. It ended up also at um, the Festival of Britain. And it went around various places and she came back to her home. This is Shan Robbins for That's Solent.